Dear friends, welcome to the channel The Eastern Front. And today we will talk about the how Soviet tankers warmed up during the war. And also I will tell you about the method of the Soviet tankers to warm up the tank very fast. The harsh Russian winters were hard trials for Germans and Soviet soldiers. The equipment of this time was created not for comfort but for war and was designed according to the principle of the maximum simplification and cheapening of production. The inside of the combat compartment of T-34 tank was not provided with air heating system, and at minus 20 degree the steel tank would turn into a freezer. During long marches the combat compartment somehow warmed up from the engine and the transmission, but still it was not enough. In the winter, tankers wore quilted jackets, air flaps and felt boots. But even this clothing didn't always save them from the cold. The driver mechanic was freezing most of all. For a better view, he would open the hatch, through which an icy wind blew directly into his face. During the halls, tank commanders were allowed to make bonfires to heat the personnel. And when the fires stopped burning, Smoldering coals were put into a metal bucket, which was then placed inside the tank and somehow warmed the combat compartment of the tank. If there was a stop for a day or more, the crew would dug a small trench, placed a metal tank stove in it, which each tank was equipped with in winter, mounted a pipe to remove smoke and carbon monoxide, and stoked it. After that, the tank would be put over the trench and covered with the tarpaulin, which each tank was also equipped with. The edges of the tarpaulin were attached to the ground by pegs and snow was put on the edges. This turned into a kind of dugout which became warm in a few hours. This dugout kept warm not only the crew but also the tank itself, which if necessary could be started up and continue moving without any problems. If there was no time to dig a trench, then a small hole 50 by 50 centimeters was dug into which only the stove was placed. The tank was covered with the tarpaulin and the crew was inside the tank. To keep the fire in the stove, the crew members took turns on the duty. I think that this design is very similar to the Russian bath. That is why Russian tankers use such a way to warm themselves. Even in our time on vacation by the rivers, Russians make homemade bath from the polyethylene. The stones are heated with the fire and then water is poured over them. As for the German tankers, things were not better for them, since it was originally planned to capture the USSR before the onset of the first frosts, which didn't happen. With great horror, the Wehrmacht soldiers recall the 20 degree frost. At the halt, the German tankers had the opportunity to warm themselves from the heat of the fire. During the marching, the German tankers had the only option to warm themselves from the heat that was released from the running tank engine. But there was a problem. The engine compartment of the tank was separated from the fighting compartment by a protective shield. The Germans drilled a hole, then inserted a hose that connected to the radiator duct. Thus, a small portion of heat, along with the carbon monoxide, entered the fighting compartment. But there was a danger of poisoning. If the tankers were located in the village, they could spend the night in the house. But quite often the tankers had to spend the night in the fields or forests. In those cases, they could use an ordinary kerosene lamp which was produced to warm up the tank engine after a long halt. Germans spent the night in the tank, setting up duty posts around the equipment. They were located in the fighting compartment, tightly clinging to each other, and lit the lamp. After everyone fell asleep, the lamp often went out and started to smoke. There was a danger of carbon monoxide poisoning, which at that time scared few people. The probability of freezing was much higher. As a result, the Wehrmacht tankers woke up completely frozen. Many of them later recall that if during sleep they unknowingly touch their hair to the icy iron of the tank, their hair instantly freezes, after which they literally turn off from the armor. 
The first German tank hitters appeared only in the autumn of 1944. As for the Soviet tanks, the first hitter of the combat compartment appeared only in the 60s on the T-64 tank. Dear friends, that's all for today. On my channel I have a video about the Soviet tanker who got stuck in a swamp and fought with Germans during two weeks in winter 1943. You will see the memories of a tanker who stayed in the frozen tank in those days. It was Tim and the Eastern Front Channel. And as usual, I wish to all of us peace and health. See you.